Conservation hunting ranches are large tracts of land where wildlife and hunters enjoy a pristine environment. Many of these ranches span hundreds if not thousands of acres and some provide habitat for species that are extinct or nearly extinct in the wild. The average size of, of the conservation ranches will vary anywhere from 100 acres to hundreds of thousands of acres. Some of these ranches are the size of some of the smaller states. You know, there really isn't much difference between conservation hunting and hunting in the wild. Um, the animals really in both situations rely on their natural instinct and that is to stay out of the view of, uh, of the hunter. The deer in our preserves are much like the wild deer. In fact, most of them are born within our preserves. Uh, they spent very little of their life in front of a human. Probably the greatest success story that, that the exotic industry has is the, uh, what we refer to as the three species, which is the scimitar horn oryx, the Attix antelope, and the Dama gazelle. As a prime example, the scimitar horn oryx, there was less than 175 of those 10, 15 years ago. And our last census in 2010 showed over 11,000 scimitar horns. There are virtually none left in the wild in their native land of Africa. Until you experience hunting a high fence preserve, it's really hard for someone to make a judgment. You know, there's the stereotypes that I'm going to go over there and I'm going to hunt a tame deer in an 80 acre pen. Well, that's just not the case. We've never had a year where every single hunter got a deer. And, you know, we're pretty successful. Uh, but yet, these deer are still deer. If you're bow hunting and you don't shower, you don't play the wind, uh, you don't hunt very s still, you're not going to get a deer. The terrain on a preserve makes a huge difference um, as far as the fair chase of the hunt. You, know, you can have a smaller amount of acres penned in, but less animals stocked in there, and it's, it's a very fair hunt and very challenging, actually, for hunters at that point wild animals that would live in their native habitat. Most of them die as young animals simply because of disease, predation, starvation, and so they many times don't reach their maturity or their most um, elite status as an animal simply because they've died as a young animal. The hardest deer to hunt is a well-fed, mature animal because if, if they've got all the food they need, and they're mature and they're smart, they don't move before dark. The difference between animals that are raised in captivity and those that are free in the wild is uh, the amount of stress that they experience through everyday activities for them. So the animals that we have bred in captivity, they have a constant, clean, fresh supply of water. They have a constant supply of forage and a balanced diet versus the animals in the wild. They spend a lot of their day doing activities like that. Elk farming caught our eye for a number of reasons. And, and really what elk farming in the end is, is it, it's raising livestock for many different opportunities throughout the United States. I grew up on a dairy farm. We raised pigs, sheep, Sheets. chickens, every kind of fowl that you could imagine. But raising elk has been probably the most enjoyable for us just because of the majesty of the animal. My father and I, and as my, was my grandfather and great-grandfather, were all cattle, sheep, and goat ranchers. When I took over our ranch, I chose to do away with our traditional livestock and get into the non-traditional, if you will, type livestock, which included a, a, the non-native species, such as axis and black buck, uh, and also uh, native species, such as whitetail. You know, my parents actually started it back in the 1970s. Uh, my kids are involved in it right now, so they're, you know, on a small scale, they're teenagers. Uh, my brother has a son that's younger, and I have a younger son as well. And um, I really anticipate that, you know, one or, or several of our kids will c continue on with our business as, as we, you know, get a little bit older and, and start to slow down, maybe they'll take it over. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to take it into a third generation and, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be in business for 60 to 80 years instead of we're 35 right now. The thing that I'm the proudest of is the of, is where we were 25, 30 years ago versus where we are today from the conservation standpoint. Our members raise more numbers of rare and endangered species than any other uh, association in the world. And I think that one aspect, I mean, we've literally saved animals from being extinct to literally thousands of them on these conservation ranches. And that aspect alone 
is, uh, is a very satisfying fact.